So the point is that this is not, none of this is new technology from a standpoint of new functionality, it's just distributed functionality. That's number one. Number two, um, you can easily implement this stuff without tossing a bunch of stuff in there in the trash can. Uh, I'm with Andrew Walding at the WSTA conference and he just talked about evolving TDM to IP and um, interesting part of it was uh, basically the way you presented it is that we're not really reinventing the wheel with this transition but it's uh, somewhat adapting and maybe you could uh, elaborate on that. Yeah sure I, I think that the people who are currently running these telephone companies and running our network today are the highest skill set needed to really evolve the network over the next couple of years. And part of my presentation was to talk about that really the IP and voice over IP revolution that's been happening is just a redistribution of the existing uh, knowledge base, the existing technologies into different you know, places in the network. Um, we don't need to go hire a bunch of new people. Uh, uh, it's really just reusing the skills that we have. And these people are the most talented people to go do that. And that was my main point. And uh, you made a po point, I, I would call it in enjoying a good SIP and uh, maybe the benefits of uh, going with a SIP and IP. Right, that was all part of, I was talking about how the phone has gone through three uh, revisions, phone 1.0, phone 2.0, and 3.0. Today the phone is no longer about uh, a phone number that you carry around in your pocket in a cell phone. Uh, your phone number suddenly becomes uh, this thing that's in the cloud. And if I'm at work or uh, if I'm at an airport, uh, I don't necessarily need my cell phone. Um, I can be contacted a bunch of different ways. Let's say that I'm in a meeting, uh, like we just were, um, and somebody wanted to call me. Uh, SIP is a protocol that will know my presence, know where I am, and then it will take somebody's voice, convert it to text, and I'll receive it as an email or a text message. So it kind of gives me more flexibility on how I'm reached. Uh, and I can just tell, you know, the cloud where I am, what I'm doing, how I prefer to be reached, and SIP takes care of that. So it's a wonderful new protocol. But again, going back to your prior question, it really doesn't reinvent the wheel. It just extends the wheel from what we know today. Well, I, the bell is ringing for us to come back, but I got one more last question because you're talking about applications and appliances, and maybe you could tell me, uh, well, which, which, what's your favorite of these uh, applications, appliances, whatever? Well, I actually kind of showed it in there. Uh, it's right here, um, and I guess I'm doing a, an advertisement for Apple here, but, but, <laughs> but you know, this, this Apple iPod uh, is not an iPhone, and, and yet, I don't know if you can get this on the camera, um, but right there, uh, I've loaded Skype uh, onto this, it's completely free, um, and I can call anybody if I have a Wi-Fi connection like we have here in the, in the hotel, uh, you can get this at your Starbucks, whatever, anywhere there's an open Wi-Fi, and this thing suddenly becomes a phone. So once again, I don't have to have a traditional phone. The phone has turned into software, and I can just take it anywhere I want as long as I have some kind of appliance uh, that'll support it. So it's pretty cool. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to upgrade my appliance because my iPod's the old one. Right. Well, thank you for taking the time, Andrew, and it was uh, great talking it was with you. It was my pleasure. Thank you.